Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. It's time for another conversation with someone interesting from the internet. And this week at the round table of dim lighting, we have Natalie Tran. Technically, she wasn't at the round table of dim lighting. We caught right. up with her at VidCon. It, it wasn't was, that dim and it wasn't round. It was rectangular. It was a squarish, rectangularish uh, table, but we took these microphones, so it shouldn't sound that much different. Right. All of that's really beside the point. Yeah. Uh, Natalie has been making videos under the handle Community Channel since 2006, so going way back, but she's been making videos consistently, pretty much on a weekly basis, especially recently again, uh, all showcasing her unique sense of humor. Uh, her channel currently has over 1.5 million subscribers. She's the second most viewed Australian channel with over 500 million views. Now, the majority of her videos are this combination of stream of consciousness monologues with a sketch format where she plays every single character. Uh, a little taste of that we're going to give you right now, a 2009 video called Sexy Underscore Baby, Those Embarrassing Old Email Addresses with 5.5 million views. Hi. So did you guys ever make up stupid email addresses when you were young? I know I did. And it's incredibly embarrassing when you're still using them. Okay, let's have a look. Natalie, yep, yep. Sorry, sweetie, could you also give me your email address oh, again? I can't uh, quite make it out. So it's S? S-X-C. Okay, so it's S-X-C and the underscore, and then is that a baby? Baby? Yep, yep. And then A-N-G-E-L. Okay, angel. Yep. And then what and are then these numbers here? 669. So we have SX, oh like sexy, sexy underscore baby underscore angel 69 at hotmail.com. That's you? <laughs> you wouldn't think it, would you? Great, now look, could you just take a seat so I'll be right with you. Thank you. Okay, you probably already get a sense if you're not familiar with her content of why she's popular. She's totally relatable. I mean, that's the thing I've always thought about Natalie's videos is I always immediately relate to the observational humor that she's, that, you know, the thing that she's making an observation about. Mm -hmm. And it's always funny. And she's been doing this for a very long time, and her fan base has remained and continued to grow. I mean, she goes back to, you know, we're talking 07, 08, early stages. No, 06. 06, yeah, all the way back. All the way back to the beginning, certainly. So, I mean, it's a testimony to her ability to remain true to her voice and continue to captivate an audience. But it, we had an interesting conversation with Natalie. I mean, it was different than I expected. I, I would say different oh, yeah. than you expected too, right? I mean, for someone with such a developed comedic voice and such longevity on the platform, she was s extremely humble. Almost meek. Yeah, I mean... I, I do believe that she helped set the template for popular comedic vlogging on YouTube today. I mean, just look at Superwoman as, uh, if not a direct emulation of her, certainly an inspiration through a couple of layers of YouTube since 2006 leads to someone, a phenomenon like Superwoman, who we've also talked to on Ear Biscuits. But when we're talking to Natalie, it was almost like we had to convince her of that in the conversation that she made a legitimate contribution to the medium. You know, she, right, did, well, she didn't want to own it. And, 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 it's, as, it's as if she hadn't even thought about it. Right. And this is coming from, you know, two guys who are definitely, have, we have a lot of aspirations and we see this YouTube thing as the thing that we want to do and continue to expand. And everyone that we talk to on Ear Biscuits, typically they have that kind of focus. It's just like, yeah, I found this thing. I have found success on YouTube and I'm going to keep pushing it. And interestingly, I mean, obviously she's just as talented as anybody that we've talked to, but yeah. her perspective is totally different. It seems like YouTube is a side project. Yeah, I mean, and that was surprising, and, and not a career. That, I mean, that's at one point she actually said she feels very lost. I, that comes up in the conversation. I mean, it's an interesting case study. Um, it's like she's evolved on another continent. I mean, she's she yeah, she's on another continent, but it I, is an island. Yeah, I wonder how much that has to do with it. It's like she's she's kind of in her own world of developing as an artist that is not tied to playing the YouTube game, as we call it, or even making it a career. I mean, she talks about the things that she wants to do while this is her side project, and that surprised me. Right, and we say all that to prepare you for the conversation because I, I feel like there are moments in this conversation where it feels like we're pushing her. 
We are pushing her to get an answer for her to recognize how awesome she is. And so, yeah, I, this is going to be interesting. It's going to be a near biscuit that stands on its own that's different from the ones that we've done so far. Uh, we want to prepare you for it. We think it's great. And like Link said, I think it's an interesting case study in someone who thinks very differently about the whole online career thing. Here it is, Our Ear Biscuit with Natalie Tran. What is this thing on your wrist? Um, this is like a, um, a pedometer and a heart rate monitor. And I wear it because I like to know how many calories, 100% that I can consume. So if it says you've exerted this many, I make sure that I eat that amount. Does it know when you're eating? Or do you no, have to it tell know. it? No, I don't mean that I try. Like I just mean because I often eat over. This way I always kind of try and justify how much food I'm eating, if that makes sense. So I go, oh, I oh got well, you. I've walked this far, so I can definitely you, eat food. Right, yes. you can put like a hamburger in terms of steps. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, I've walked <laughs> far today. That looks far to me, so I'll definitely eat more. Are you sure it's not a watch? Because it looks like a watch. It is also a watch. Can I hold it? How, how convenient. So I'm, I'm interested in these kinds of things. It counts your steps. Are you, uh, I mean, you're obviously physically fit. No, but I'm I, really, I've got Mr. Burns' body. If you take my clothes off, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty unattractive. What, who's Mr. Burns? From, um, the from The Simpsons, man. Oh. Come I've, on, Link. I've never oh, seen I'm sorry, that. I don't know pop culture <laughs> at all. I think that show's only in Australia. <laughs> yes, it is an Australian show. It's very small. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get you the know, reference. No, they're, okay. they're coming out with a new cup uh, called The Vessel. And this is a um, this is a cup that you pour any liquid in the world into the cup, mm -hmm. and it like re any other cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it, no, it's amazing. It goes a step beyond that. It analyzes what you have poured into the cup and tells you how many calories it is. What? So it'll be like blue Gatorade, three hundred calories. Oh, I mean, wow. it may not it have talks to you. I'm, I'm auditioning to be the voice of the vessel, <laughs> but no, good it's, for us. It's seriously, in the half. next year, this is happening. It is it it exists and it will be on the market. So, so you can pour anything you want, any mix, and it knows. Well, that's a great question. I was told that the guy who tested it poured a bunch of different liquids into it, and it got everyone right. Now, is this just a Kickstarter campaign where people promise everything and then nothing really happens? No, this is legit. I, I read it on the sounds internet. Sounds like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. sounds like a load of crap. Well, I think the question is, though, I mean, you anyone who has a contraption like this that you're wearing is a little bit progressive in terms of technology, no, 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 right? I'll be, I'll be completely upfront with you. I was given this and then, but, but I was so infatuated with it. I bought him one full price. And for me, that's the big deal of you like a product when you're given one and then you buy someone else one. So I, I have to be upfront with you. I was given one. I wasn't told I had to wear it, but because I'm a loser, I was like, I'm going to wear this everywhere. <laughs> so I wore it and then I got him one. Him being? Oh, sorry. Him being my partner, Rowan, because I really wanted to see how many, we collect data at the end of the day. So <laughs> you can also measure how the percentage of your sleep, how often you stayed still. And so I check every night I wake up and I'm like, 83%. What about you? <laughs> well, has it changed anything about your, your habits? Um, it changes what I know about my habits. What kind of sleeper are you? You move around a lot? No, apparently not. Though I think it's because we're in a hotel at the moment and the dunas are very heavy, so I'm just stuck under them. The what? The what the is? The dunas. Is that the covers? Yeah, sure. She sleeps. <laughs> no, she sleeps. She sleeps in a room with sand dunas. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, I don't know what the you're sleeping that on is. piles of there, sand. There is no sand in my room. No, there's. You know what I mean. The the big the dunas. <laughs> yeah, you know we, what I'm we, saying. We call them duvets or comforters or whatever. A quilt. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're like trapping you. You're trapped in your bed. Yeah, because you know it's very heavy when you're in a hotel. It just kind of keeps you still. <laughs> so you're not a health conscious person. No. Uh, are you? But are you? So it's more of a competition between the two of you to see who can. <laughs> it yeah well yeah I've walk got walk the most or well, eat the a, most. Yeah, we're just very we're big into our data collection. So for example, we had traditional heart rate monitors, which, you know, the ones you stick around your, your body. <laughs> Those are uncomfortable. So I wore them, we wore them for a full 24 hours. So we, for a few days so that we could compare um, <laughs> our exertion after a few days. But I now have like a permanent scar under here because it just, but I was such a, like a dick. I just didn't take it off. I was like, oh, it's really hurting under there. But I was like, really? How I, long I ago it, was this? Oh, uh, ages ago. And now I have like these permanent like nipples and like nipple looking scars under his. Really? So you have yeah. four nipples now? I have four nipples. That's, well, that's but a problem. Two of them told me how, what my heart rate was. So oh. it was. It was worth it. Now, it seems pretty obvious to translate four nipples into like internet success. Oh, uh, yes. So, I mean, yeah. when, when you're in this, um, field of occupation, does that happen? Is it, okay, I'm going to turn, have you turned the heart rate monitor scars or any of these other weird gadgetry 
things into vlogs. No, I can't believe I even told you guys about this. <laughs> I've never told anyone about it. You, you haven't made a video called no, I Have really, Four Nipples because... No, it's super it, embarrassing. Well, Why and, would I tell anyone about well, because that? Views. Views. Yeah. All caps, four exclamation points. Yes. Naked in the title? No, I haven't told anyone about my nipples. Well, you know, it's interesting that we that that, uh, that we're talking about this, taking something like four nipples and turning it into a. If you're not going to do it, we're going to do it. By okay. The way. Uh, because we technically do have four nipples between the two of us. <laughs> That's true. Uh, it would be a big letdown, though. Four nipples, and it's just the two of us, yeah. guys. Um, but you have uh, even from the early days, you kind of made a decision. It, I think to just kind of do things your way, right? So you, you, to not necessarily play the YouTube game. Uh, even we were just do looking at some- you say that because I'm failing right now? No, I'm joking. No, like, okay, like your early videos, right? Yeah. There was a couple of videos in, a, in your first like 10 or 20 videos where you would be like boring video. Mm-hmm. And, but, and it, and what it, do you mean? You, you, weren't like, try, you weren't trying to be ironic. She would say that. Yeah, because you were doing what you called your housekeeping videos early on. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so where you would answer questions and that kind and of I thing. And I wish people happy birthday because it's the kind of person I like. Right. Yeah. And so you were like, boring video. But I definitely got the sensation that she's telling me it's a boring video because she thinks, that, guys, this is going to be a boring video, not because I'm trying to be some super ironic person to trick you into watching it. There's just a yeah, certain I'm not on that honesty, high, right? cool level. Yeah, no, it was just honest. I mean, that was YouTube yonks ago, and I guess every, it was just such a different community, and I guess, I don't know, yeah. And it, that seems to be that that's the kind of, that's how your career has been characterized, is you're just, you're just being yourself, you're just doing your thing. I mean, it literally is you multiple times in each video. Yeah, no, I guess I never, it never st- started as anything, and I've always kind of hoped that I'd just keep it up for fun and continue with life, and it's just something, I guess, that was thrown into the mix. Right. Yeah. Now, I like to call you the queen of split screen. There's lots of people who will do that. You're shaking your head, but... I cut off all my fingers on the last video. I didn't notice in the crop, and they're like, you're missing all these fingers. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, but... but well, I, it's, it's, it's the hazards of split screen. Yeah. The, the physical split screen is not what I'm in awe of. I know how to do that. <laughs> what? And so I know how to not cut my fingers off. There's, yeah. You know, you just don't cross the line. <laughs> so you're, you're not blowing my mind there. Oh. But I call you the queen of split screen because the comedic timing. How do you maintain and execute the comedy that you've come up with in your head or written down? Or you, I don't know, you tell me how you've, do you write it down? And then how do you, how do you maintain the comedic timing in a split screen with yourself? Um, all my videos are scripted. So they're all scripted. And I guess especially with the sketch kind of skip parts of them, they all have to be scripted because they interact with each other. Mm-hmm. It breaks my heart that I'm not uh, good enough or patient enough to do any green screening because that would be much more interesting. But um, I guess I just, I put a 20 cent coin on the floor and I'm like, that's where the other person's standing. Or sometimes my cat moves it and I'm like, I wish you hadn't done that because now I don't know where, to, where the other person's standing, but it's very high tech. I just put a coin on the floor. Well, you put a coin that I didn't even know existed. I mean, so you're, even even <laughs> commit, that, a 20 I, cent coin is something that I didn't know. It's magic. I, I make a coin and then I put it on the floor and then I... I look at that part and I go, I hope this looks right. Right. So you establish island that way, but <laughs> are you are you hearing in your mind the other you speaking the retorts and yeah. how do you know how long it's going to take? Yeah, there's, I have this really, I must be very boring and repetitive because I have this awful ability to speak at the same pace of sentences constantly. So like sometimes I've dubbed things. And it's just worked the first time. I'm like, wow. Like, I just have no variance in the way I speak. Meaning or, you ADR it you, to match yeah, your... Yeah, so because like... you don't always even reference it. You just say it and it's yeah, like, Yeah, sometimes well, I just said it and it just fits. So you're not listening back to the... It, it, I, w- I thought you would have done is like, okay, I'm going to play back what Oh, no, I just no, not did. ADR with the videos. Sorry, not with the videos. But I mean, sometimes that's happened. Yeah, right, but, yeah, yeah. but back to, with your videos, when you're doing the split screen thing, you're not like going back and watching what you just said. Oh, no, Because no. you can't really touch the camera other than, right? Because you just got to stay in the same yeah, place. and the light always changes. No, I always just kind of, in my head, I can hear it. So it's okay. But if you notice in my videos, um, I nod a lot. The other character nods a lot, or they kind of look in the other direction, just in case. If I if if the twenty cent coins moved, I just kind of look off. I nod a lot, <laughs> like this. Like I close my eyes and I nod, so that way there's no real interaction. Right, it just kind of it works. It works, yeah. And how critical are you of your own videos? Do you watch them back? And having done them for almost eight years, A, do you watch back your latest video even beyond the edit? Like once it's up and are you critical? Or do you shy away from that? 
And B, do you go back and watch some of the earliest videos? Does that ever happen? Um, I make a lot of videos that don't go up, as I'm sure everyone does. So um, after I've edited, if I really don't like a video, I watch it a few times. If I think it's bad, sometimes I think maybe I'm just in a bad mood. I'll come back later. If I still don't like it, it doesn't go up. How often does that happen? Uh, it used to happen a lot more often, but maybe I'm just lazier now. But um, I'd say maybe one in every four videos, every three or four videos doesn't make it up. Really? Yeah. Or I write a lot I write a lot more scripts that don't make it up as well. So for every script. So it might be something that happens in the in the middle of shooting and you're like, oh, this just isn't working or, or whatever. I used to give up, but uh, Rowan, who helps me film a lot, encourages me to finish them and then I finish them and edit them and see how it goes. But maybe I'm just being a dick and I often don't like them, so I don't – don't put them up. We, we, I think we just have a lower standard. Your Be- videos are super polished. I don't know what you're talking well, If I put the production value that you guys were, I would be very happy with every video too. I'd be like, no, this is going up because I paid people. I, 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 it's going it, down. It, it, it well, just, that's true. It's it just be, me in my pajamas. Like, it's okay. I'll, be like, I'll come back to this another day. It could be the, the budgets, but it's like, you know, we get to a point where we're just like, well, we, we've definitely, we definitely have videos that we're not proud of. But, then, but every- then you're like, okay, but we've got to put this but th- put this up. But you're, you get to a point where you're just like, nope, if, if, if there's not a video. Because at this point, are you still, uh, is it still kind of weekly or what, like what's the? Yeah, I still do them weekly. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still put ones up that I'm not super happy with. But that tends to be when I go, well, I've got work. I just can't. And I tell people I'll have one up a week now. I try to. Mm, um, right. And so if, if it worse comes to worse, I do put one up. But yeah, it's not always something I'm super happy with. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that maybe we decided we weren't going to tell anybody, but I'll be vulnerable mm-hmm. and I'll expect a reciprocation later on in this ear biscuit. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we've definitely put a lot of work and time and it's difficult to walk away from something. But I mean, we had an idea for something um, and it involved kids and then we shot the whole thing. Mm. And then we realized that inadvertently it had gotten way too close to something that the fine brothers were doing mm-hmm. yeah and you know them being so successful at it we didn't want to come close i mean and they're also friends we didn't want to come close to any sort of comparison so we scrapped the whole thing mm-hmm. and when we're talking two days of filming with kids like <laughs> lots of kids yeah. i'm telling you and we just didn't anticipate how close it was gonna it, the final product was gonna seem and we scrapped the whole thing. Oh, that's a shame. And that's, it's really, not only are you spending money and you've got all these people working on this thing, but we had all these kids lined up that then we had to, well, somebody had to tell them. We didn't. You hired someone else to tell them that. that. <laughs> the kids weren't going to, it wasn't going to see the light of the day. Did, you, did you do They've a kids been... react to their videos not being put up on YouTube? Because that would have been a good way to handle that, I think. <laughs> you know what? That that's, is, yeah. it, it, well, here's what we should do. We should just give that video to the Fine Brothers yeah. and let them make that video. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure though, if you put it up, they wouldn't have seen it that way. And I'm sure other people wouldn't have. You've got a, a big bank of work and they wouldn't. Well, I, I appreciate that you want to that you're that you're encouraging us, but no, we're not putting it up. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and, and we shouldn't have. So, hey, we've been there. Well, oh. very recently. Now, yeah. thanks for bringing it up. I feel horrible now. No. <laughs> so, okay, so you you are part of what I would call the first early wave of YouTube. You know, 2006. Let's let's go back. And, and lead up to that point, what, what got you into YouTube and that kind of thing. So let's just go back to the beginning mm-hmm. of, of Natalie. Okay. So where'd you grow up? and What's that know? story? Um, I grew up in Sydney with my family, as you do sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I grew up with my family, as you, <laughs> I grew up with my family. As you do. Um, I was just a very normal child. Um, I'm the youngest, which probably says I was a bit of a sh- but I think that's about it, really. <laughs> like I was... You know, the youngest. Youngest of, of how many? Of two. My sister's nine years my senior. Nine okay. years? Yeah. I crashed, a, I crashed the party. <laughs> I that's crashed a big late. gap. Yeah, it is a huge gap. So what, how do your parents explain that? I'm Asian, so we don't even speak of such things. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> tell, so tell things. us about your parents. Oh, they're lovely. My father, he was a teacher in Vietnam, and then he came to Australia, and he taught uh, primary school in Vietnam, I mean, in Australia. And then my mother was a solicitor in Vietnam. She came to Australia, and she worked a few jobs and eventually worked at a post office, like sorting mail and stuff in the back room. So what was the circumstances that led to the move from Vietnam to Australia? And when mm. was that? They fled Vietnam and they arrived. Fled? In, yeah, and they arrived um, via boat in 1981. So, okay, so explain the fleeing part. Yeah, so um, after the war, a lot of Vietnamese people 
seeked refuge other places and they were lucky enough to have arrived in Australia when laws were better and we were accepting people <laughs> and mm. they arrived in Australia in 1981 and we've been Australian since. Well, I, y- I was born in Australia, so. Yeah, I, I read a quote where you said that your parents endured so much to give uh, you and your sister great lives. Yes, they did and they were wonderful, very selfless people and... I'll always be in, indebted to them. They are they live. still living? Yeah, they are. Oh, okay. And one day I'll buy them a massive house. and. <laughs> that's the plan? That's the plan. I'm going to buy them a massive farm and anything they want. And <laughs> Well, you know, you have a, a very specific sense of humor that we both really appreciate. Oh, thank you. Um, and it's very developed and it's it's great. Did that come from your parents? Yeah, my parents very much made me very aware of like, the subtle differences between people, I guess, and the way they behave, not necessarily where they, it wasn't really always the same kind of observational humor that I talk about, but it may have just been, have you noticed this or have you noticed that? And I guess that's something that you pick up or maybe it's just a different, but I mean, observational humor isn't really a specific thing. Everyone notices it. So, I Well, to be able to put it in a certain way, especially in the way that you're able to write it I, is, is absolutely a gift. Yeah, I, I guess our curiosity is, is that the type of thing that came up conversationally with friends or with your family? I think my parents probably established that way of thought, but it's probably something that I talk about with friends or it's just something I notice as everyone does Mm -hmm. when they're hanging out with friends. You seem to say that culturally that your parents, you didn't really talk to your parents about the specifics of anything. You know, you're talking about the difference between uh, you and your sister being born is something you never discussed with them. No, sometimes I go. <laughs> sometimes I go to other people's family. Sometimes I can't believe the way they're allowed to talk to their families. Like if I laugh too loudly at the dinner table, mom's like, huh, "Calm down." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> okay, all good, all good." So as I've gotten older, she's been a little bit cooler with things. Like I can say words like, "You look sexy," and she laughs. But it's still a bit, you know. She's calmed down a bit in terms of me being a bit of a dick around. It's like I see her, and she's always in her pajamas because pajama is the home attire of immigrants and so <laughs> we wear pajamas at home all the time and like sometimes I come over and because I'm coming over I'm in proper clothes you know and she won't know I'm coming over so she'll be in her fluoro pajamas that are she bought for three dollars at the markets or something and I'll come over and I'll slap her on the bum and go, you look really sexy back in the day she probably would I would have been in a lot of trouble for that mm-hmm. um but now she's okay with it a little so now you yeah. started making videos and for years a few years at least, you were making them from home. Like, were you living with your parents? Yeah, so I made them. They bought me my first computer when I was at uni, and I made them through my eyesight. So I literally, like, dragged my computer everywhere. I read about uh, Lonely Girl in the newspapers, and I remember just going onto the website and being really interested in the website. Did you think that Lonely Girl was a real person? No, I didn't, which is why I heard about in the paper. It was after everything had been revealed. It was just I had never heard of YouTube, which I love the idea of a university person not knowing what YouTube is, because if you think about it now, every mm-hmm. man and his dog knows what it is. Mm-hmm. But um, I remember going on and really enjoying the community and then I saw video responses. So I started clicking on video responses and then that kind of landed me into a space where I saw everyone communicating with each other and I wanted to do the same. So you made video responses to, to vi- Lonely Girl or no, to, to just video videos response. across YouTube? Yeah, just to other videos and stuff. But th- did you have a channel at the time called Community Channel when you were doing that? Yeah, so when I oh, – I, I hate the name Community Channel. But, yeah, I signed up. It's like calling yourself HBO or something. It's really like – you know, it's like that. Um, Why? Well, yeah, so what went into that? You know, do you know uh, – it's called public – is it called public access television yep. here? Mm-hmm. It's like YouTube. So we had that in Australia and I was obsessed with this channel because – you would see people filming like a science show in their living room and then the, the telephone would go off and they'd look at the camera, <laughs> right. they'd look at the hallway and they'd be like, oh, and then, you know, he'd say, I'm just going to get the phone. I'll edit this out. No, nah, I won't. And then he went out and you just hear this conversation <laughs> happening. So I really liked this channel. Yeah. So I called myself Community Channel. Okay. It's, so it's like community it, television. It's like, commu- I didn't think, you know. So, okay. commu- so you're saying specifically... The, there was an Australian public access that was called Community Channel. Yeah, it was called Community So Channel. you just ripped their name. Yeah, I just called myself like HBO. It's not HBO well, at that, all. It's, it's funny because, you know, I would assume that most people just are like, this This girl had this amazing insight into the community of YouTube. Yeah, and so a lot she, of people think I'm religious and they're like, oh, so you're like a do-gooder because you like the community and the channel. And I'm like, no, I just like these. It's like the equivalent <laughs> of calling your cha- your channel public access TV. Yes, it is. It is. It's exactly like okay. that. It was really dumb. Ironically, it it does have this, it seems like you were getting involved as a community member 
yeah. with the whole the conversation because it seems like that's that's where I thought you were going with the name of the channel because what got you involved originally wasn't the this impetus to entertain, mm. but it was to be involved in, in the conversation you know, that was happening. I really happening. like that story, so I'm going to go with that from now on. <laughs> I like it a lot. I, I originally called myself Community Channel because I went in there with a sense of community. <laughs> there you go. Rather see? than to entertain. I like it. Taken. That's that's the <laughs> new story. We Done. just officially changed the, the official story. I like that. Okay. Did you have a need to socialize on the internet? Was there? Did you not have friends in real life? And was this oh, kind of harsh. a... <laughs> Um, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I went to uni and I worked after uni. So it was like I came home off like, you know, you come home at 10 o'clock at night. So I kind of made videos at nighttime. And then I I had friends, man. Back off. I had friends. (laughs) I had friends. Okay, I'll I'll back off, but not really. But (laughs) did you make actual YouTube friends early on? Absolutely. A lot of really wonderful people that I've met. I've met online and it's, yeah, it's lucky. Do you do you keep in touch with these people now? Like some of the yeah. earliest people? Yeah, I, I I went to one's wedding the before, and I have a wonderful time mm. with with people who you meet online. Okay, so you were at university, but you were still living at home with your parents. Yeah, and so ten o'clock, you'd, you'd log on to the YouTube's, and you would make your response videos. At some point, I imagine it it started to shift into more of your comedic voice. How did that happen? I mean, I guess back then, like you, everyone took. I still take feedback, um, mm-hmm. you know, to heart. But I guess when people really enjoy one element of your video, you go, okay, well, maybe I'll focus on that. And obviously they enjoyed some storytelling. And then, okay, I'll just keep going with that. In, in, in terms of the, the genre, it, with it's sort of a vlog with these scripted elements, right? Mm-hmm. Were there other people doing that kind of thing? Like, w- w- did you... Were you, you know, emulating uh, someone? Yeah. Um, I remember the reason that I started even doing the cloning was because a subscriber made a video response to me and he did the same thing. And then I did one back to him and then that just kind of everyone enjoyed that. And then I just kept going. But then I figured it was easier just to break it up between monologue and sketches to to story tell, I guess. And then what, <laughs> what became, what really started to break out for you? What was the turning point from just, I'm doing this for the fun of it to, whoa, people are writing articles about me. It was very organic. I mean, I've got, I mean, I, sorry, I don't mean this in an only, but I've got 1.5 million subscribers. You know, kids log on these days, start a YouTube, and a YouTube account, and in six months they have like 5 million subscribers or something. So mine's been a very slow organic growth that's not been this mm-hmm. meteoric rise. But by 2010, I mean, articles were being written and they were speculating about how much money you were making. All the millions of dollars that I make. And yeah, they, yeah. Were say, they were saying, I mean, they were saying, okay, and she's the queen of YouTube. She's in the top 10 earners. I don't know how that came out in that year. It was really weird. I was like, I'm definitely not in the top 10. I, I, I think, guess, well, that's what everyone on the list said. Yeah. Right. But the fact that you were one of those 10 people at that point, were you making, you were making it into a career. Look, I still work outside of YouTube and I still do stuff. And I guess, I don't know, I guess it's like I said, it's been so slow and so organic. I've always just accepted it, that it's something fun I do on the side that is a bit bigger. But I mean, especially with going to VidCon today, I've just... And you see how huge it is for everyone else. It's, I mean, that's. I think it's a different playing field for those guys, and maybe for me, it's just something really fun I do on the side that was made my transition from being a young adult to someone in their late twenties made that a bit more exciting. If that makes sense. I, I mean, I get the sense as you talk about it. I mean, there's a that you kind of want it to be that way too. I mean, it, do, would you say that? You're like this is this is a great medium. This is fun for me. This is a great outlet, but this isn't something that I necessarily wanted to propel me to a place where I'm, you know, I've got a t- television show or I'm in my own studio or mm. that kind of thing. It sounds like you, those aren't necessarily things that you aspire to. Yeah, I would love writing, as I'm sure everyone who's on YouTube will tell you. I, you know, I love writing and I love creating things and. I'd love to do other things and explore it in other mediums. Um, but I guess I always try and remember I was doing something before YouTube came along, if that makes sense. And I want to make sure it doesn't take me off the path entirely. Okay. So what, what was path. that? Yeah, I don't have a path necessarily, but I don't want it to completely drive what I'm doing. So what, mm-hmm. what, is, what have you been doing since 
university that this has kind of still been the side project? What's been the main thing? I'm very lost, like every person in the first world is who is very <laughs> privileged and, you know, has well, too many choices. But and... I, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I feel like the way that you characterize it, you sell yourself short. I mean, it's just like, you know, we're sitting here, yeah, we've been fans of yours for a long time. And then we, we, we see you at VidCon and we're like, we definitely want to talk to Natalie. Uh, because we, we have this level of respect for what you've what you've done and how it's just been, it's so pinpointed and so like so good and been good for a very very long time. But see, but you shake your head. You're like, oh no, you guys. Uh, no, I see your videos all the time. Every time I go and do work with an agency or something, they always pull up things you guys have done. They always say this is kind of the caliber we want. And I'm like, well, you guys are tight <laughs> Australians. So it's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, you guys are amazing. And I well, but I, don't, I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I we we may have some bells and whistles, and we're doing a different a different type of video. But you know, in terms of the. I guess I guess what I'm saying is that the the core elements that make something engaging and good on YouTube are things that are based in personality and just the ability to entertain people, and that doesn't necessarily have to include some oh, no, high sorry. level of production. I wasn't, I wasn't saying what you did was good because of your no no no. Sorry, I didn't mean it. No, in that but way. I'm, I'm saying but I'm saying the core of what you have is you know I'm there there are, there are production companies out there who would been over backwards to say, hey, we want to take the stuff that, because anybody can add that kind of stuff, right? But they can't bring the personality uh, and the connectivity that you have with your audience. They can't bring that to, that's, that's what they're looking for, right? Well, I would say the comedic voice. I mean, I think this is an interesting conversation. It's kind of turned into us trying to convince you that you're great. No. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I mean, it's, you know, our assumption was, okay, she's a full-time YouTuber. She's been doing this all these years, and I'm very interested in the resilience it takes to remain relevant for eight years with changing what you do very little. I think we're surprised to hear a level of humility that you don't need. I don't know if it's that you don't want this to be your thing or that you just don't consider yourself of a caliber that you deserve for it to be your thing. I think that's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but I don't know. I guess I have other things outside of YouTube as well that I'd really like to achieve in life. So, Tell me about those things. I want to build a place for my family. I'd like to give them somewhere nice. Um, and I guess I'm just working towards that at the moment so I can can do that for them. Well, what is your what is your perception as someone who's who's been involved in the community for uh, you know, a long time and you've seen the evolution of YouTube and then you see like you said, you come to VidCon and oh, this just... has been mind blowing. I can't even explain how mind blowing this is. So has what are been. some of the things that you've thought as you've observed it? We've likened the crowds running towards people like World War Z. It has been, I don't even know what they're running towards. I just, I just assume there's a good-looking young boy on the other side yes, of it. Some that's British, what I'm thinking. British yeah. in I'm nature. I'm thinking there must be a really tall, young, good-looking guy on the other side, or a very pretty girl, like beauty girl, on the other side, because they just scream and they run. And I mean, I don't, I remember like the days where I would sit on Stickem. In my lunch breaks, I would walk down to, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> I would walk to the internet cafe around the corner from my work and I was sitting there so I could talk to the other, Amer- like to the American YouTubers during my lunch break and we would do that. And I remember that. So I remember like Phil DeFranco was in there and the mm-hmm. wine cone and all these, you oh, know. Yeah. And so I remember that was what it was like. Like that's what YouTube was like for me. So when you come here and you're like, whoa, oh, there's a sign and it's printed in color. And I was like, oh, that's pretty money. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. And then I went into the registration room. And I'm like, oh, badges and like barcodes. This is getting pretty. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, so that's, it's changed a lot from what I, what it was. And I guess I'm so, it's amazing. I love, I love the things that get shared on YouTube. It's incredible. And I love that people can access video production at such small cost, like speak, like relatively speaking to what they were before. You know, that kids with SLRs can make films. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. It's- right. But it, at the same time, it's like, you know, I, I definitely, especially as somebody like we've been to every VidCon just because we've been here, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. No, it, it'd be great to go. But but you, 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 it's cha- even VidCon itself has changed so much from the first year till now. You definitely get this sense that it's just like, hmm, this has become, it's amazing. But there are these, there are these uh, like trappings of this has become something that's so much it gets the more popular it gets and the more celebrity that there is involved in it, it kind of gets tainted, right? 
I had this, I think this is because I look really boring. So as we were coming through, this woman saw me, this mother came up to me and she said, you work for VidCon. I was like, I don't work for VidCon. She goes, anyway, let me tell you, we're really upset. And she went through and I've had a lot of parents, I must be someone who parents approach because I've had a lot of parents come up to me today and they tell, I'm just eating a sandwich and like, listen, I have to tell you I'm really upset because and I felt that my heart breaks because I go, I drove, you know, I flew my kids here from Florida and we didn't get to see so-and-so, you know, like the signings, they closed off the signings, whatever. And for me, that's an interesting thing because I guess as a, but you're right. And I guess that comes along with this whole new wave of what a celebrity is and how there's this fame attached to these guys and they have to, like security escorting people is really interesting, you know, and I understand it's necessary, but that's been an interesting shift in culture, I guess, that it's not so much a connection anymore. Now it's, you can come and yeah. Have signings and do you how do you guys feel? I'm surprised you guys are on this level, like that you haven't been harassed. Well, them. we stay in here a lot. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Um and we're not we're, young, uh cheeky British I don't even know what cheeky means, but I think <laughs> I it means that I've you get swarmed. Pictured, I've already pictured him in my head. He's you very get attractive, swarmed. whoever you're describing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we um we have to stay in here a lot. Yeah, yeah. So but there, but there, definitely, us. It, there is a sense when when it does happen, like we've got our scheduled, you know, signing that mm-hmm. is going to be for a certain number of hours or whatever. And some people will probably be turned away from that. Yeah. And then if, when we're walking through, if we're doing something and we're going to a panel and we say, sorry, just come to the thing tomorrow. And to think that if those people couldn't get into it, it is this, there is this dynamic that I told Link, I was like, my, the, the worst part of VidCon to, for me is th- are those interactions where I'm having, I'm telling somebody no, I, I can't get a picture or I can't do a, get a hug yeah, right now yeah. because if I do, then maybe there'll be another one and another one and another one. And we're not even, the, you know, like Link said, we're not the 20 year old British uh, we're bo- not boy vlogger. Anywhere near the most popular people here, certainly. Oh, you guys are pretty popular. <laughs> I mean, do you, do you feel like that this is kind of eye opening that you've been isolated? You've, you've continued to contribute through your channel and it's been very consistent. I mean, in terms of the number of views, it's not like you've dropped off that much, but do you feel like you're living in an older YouTube that your eyes are being open being here kind of a thing? Yeah, for sure. And in Australia, it's so different. Like it's, we live in a country where there's, you know, there's arguments about whether we should have faster internet or not. Like we live in a very different kind of place. And Mm. when people see me in the street or something and they say, hi, genuinely, it takes me a while to know where I know them from because they're so relaxed and they're so, hey, how's it going? And then I assume I must have met them through work or something. And then then I'll say, oh, no, I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah. And so it's very relaxed and it's very different. I can't imagine this kind of screaming. Like it's it's very, yeah. Do you watch other YouTubers today and what do you think? Um, I still stick, I'm, I'm, I stick to a lot of people who I've been watching for a long time. Um, I, I do get recommended a lot of young people, but I guess as you do when you start to be precious, like I said, and you think you're time poor all the time with work as if you go, I'll watch these later, I'll watch these later. But I'm on holidays at the moment, so I'll catch up more. But um, I but think do it's you a very... catch do you catch glimpses of um, I, other YouTubers yeah. doing what you've been doing for eight years? And what do you think when you see someone like Superwoman um, doing the split screen and she's playing different characters and talking to herself. I mean, you say, you know, oh, that's that's she's doing my thing. She <laughs> she, <laughs> she may not be here, thing. but I do, <laughs> but I do. But I mean, well, you tell me what you think. I'll tell you what I think. I understand having that kind of a feeling, um, but it's not like I made up sp- split screen. And um, I think kids these days are very polished at what they do, and I think they're really smart and switched on and. You know, good, good on them. I guess, like, I can't. but they wouldn't be. Uh, I mean, there's an argument to be made. They wouldn't be doing it if if you hadn't done it first. I mean, in terms of oh, somebody you, would have done it. It's not like I, you know what I mean. Like I did. Like I said, everyone's been doing split screen. It's not like it's I've, not that specifically. But even the comedic voice and a female with a strong comedic voice all alone playing different characters or speaking her mind in a comedic way and interacting with fans. It is set. It, you set a template that absolutely is is being emulated directly and indirectly, and through a couple of different layers at this point. And being around and still doing it, I mean, does that give you a sense of satisfaction? I don't ever attribute their the, the videos to me. I don't ever go. Oh, they've obviously like taken this from me. Um, but yeah, look, I just you just have to be like good on them, and they 
they're so good at what they do now, you know, like it took me so long to figure out maybe I should move off a webcam and maybe I should get a microphone and maybe I shouldn't, <laughs> you know, I just, they're great at what they do and you just have to applaud them really. So you don't want to say that it took you so long and it doesn't <laughs> take them as long because oh, of me and other people. Because I think that's the truth. No, because it's a generational thing. Everything will happen faster with the next generation. Everything will. It takes you, it took me longer to look up books in a library. Oh no, now kids have all these new ways of, you know, it's just the way time works and you have to accept it right. and move on. You made a comment, Rhett read it to me about how you put comments at the end of your videos and now there's people who do that and do more with comments. Mm -mm. Where did you read that? That's on your about section of your channel. Oh, is that? I sound like a, it must have been a joke. I thought I deleted that dick joke. Okay. Um, oh, that was a joke. It was like it was, it was me being a dick, and I thought I deleted that. I don't know why I it. <laughs> it's just still on there. I need to there. learn about like well, this no, YouTube I, channel I editing. It takes me ages to get in around my channel well, settings. Well, I definitely now. took it as sarcasm. Yeah. But yeah, I, I. But at the same time, I I sense that there's there's truth under under that, which is like yeah, I was you know everyone's doing all this interesting stuff with with comments. I only put that up because I, I got comments on my thing, which was like, oh, she does this like so-and-so. And then you go on, there's like 14-year-old doing it. That's all. So I was like, I did it. You know, I've been doing it a while. It's okay. It was, it was obnoxious and I thought I had deleted it and I apologize <laughs> that I hadn't. Um, I don't think you should apologize. No, no, it's just. I liked it. No, I, I thought I had deleted it, but I can never. And they changed that YouTube they do, page and I, I can't find change, things anymore. They do change it quite a bit. Yeah, no, that's just everyone. Like I said, if I didn't do it, someone else was going to do it. I didn't invent comment feedback or anything i'm just being a dick i'm sorry <laughs> but when you put like porn music with it can you say that you invented that come on well no one's copied that so that's so maybe that's not the magic maybe that's not the magic that i thought it was <laughs> you've you've been more consistent in making your videos over the past year yeah but there were times when you would kind of fall off yeah yeah well and that, be yeah. gone yeah yeah it was many, there many secret babies <laughs> was there anything let well let us in on some of these secret babies was there what took you off of youtube and were there was there any drama i mean i guess my hunch or my guess is that when you're putting yourself out there and you you are setting a template for a, a strong voice female vlogger mm -hmm. that i have to believe that there's this uh gray line between your personal life and your public entertainment life. Yeah. Did that have an impact on your ability to, to maintain your videos? Did anything go wrong? I like to think, no. Like, I mean, I know I talk about things my mother does and stuff, but they're pretty generic things. You know, my mother tells me to bring a jumper. Everyone's mom tells them to bring a jumper. Sorry, a sweater. A right, sweater. yeah. Um, like that, you know, I like to think I actually don't talk about my personal life too much, really. Like they're all very generic. Don't you hate it when this happens? That it, that it happens to everybody, if that makes sense. There's not really that much about my personal life in there. But fans demand it. I mean, there's speculation all over the internet about you being engaged a few years ago because you wore a ring on the wrong finger or something. I wear many rings. I wear many rings. Um, look, it's all just, yeah, look, one, one, the first break I had, I can't remember why. It just happens, and I don't know about you guys, but sometimes... I'm a very, uh, I, I work myself up sometimes. And I went, oh no, because I've made a big gap. The next video needs to be really good. Mm -hmm. And then it just becomes this huge fear. It's a stupid fear and I don't know why. So that usually is what prolongs a big gap. Um, the second, I remember I had just gotten back from a big trip around the world. We created a video, a travel series. Uh, Rowan filmed those with me, a travel series as well as our YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we were contracted to make one a week as well as that while we traveled. And right. it was a lot of content to make, right. um, especially when you're on the ground and you're traveling and it means no sleep ever. It, and, that wasn't on your channel? Um, no, so I put it on somebody else's, on a company's channel. And by the time I got back, I was just exhausted. And mm -hmm. I'd gone through a bad time in my personal life and I just wanted, I guess, to get over that because, like I said, I mean, YouTube's really fun and stuff, but it's on the side and I always try and make sure life is good first right. before YouTube, yeah. So it ha so. I, you know, every every YouTuber deals with it, with um, just fans that take things too far and, and messages and you get, get berated with comments and, and messages, that kind of thing. And from our experience that females deal with this uh, many degrees more than males. You guys than don't males. get told that people are going to impregnate you? <laughs> no, we don't. And cut your hair off? No, no right. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, like, how, what, how has that been, has that had any impact on the way that you approach YouTube. Um, 
yeah, look, if I could go back, I mean, no, I shouldn't say that. It's it's hard because on the internet, for some reason, if you wear a singlet top, it it somehow is very, you know, erotic. Whereas if you were to walk down a street in a singlet top, it's not very interesting or you know anything like that. But um, you you just grow a thicker skin to it, I guess. Sometimes I don't I don't tend to go out in public meetings a lot, to be completely honest with you, because I do receive. I used to receive when I was, uh, I used to receive a lot more kind of threats Hmm. and uh, scary emails and stuff like that. And I guess. What do you mean? um, I just, you just, I used to have like, I reckon a dozen people who would write me every day and they would span over years. Um, So I remember when the first VidCon happened, I really wanted to go and I was planning on going, but then the emails got scarier and I guess because they knew where I was coming and then. They would say, I know where you're coming. And 12 yeah. people who – you would get uh, 12 least, emails a day for a year. At least. From 12 different from these people. people. Um, and I remember one guy just wrote – Just all independently. Just, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I remember one guy got really upset and he wrote me every minute one night and it was insane. And you get that a lot as a, as a girl, though, I th- as a woman. Sorry, I think that um, – I'm sure everyone gets it. Sorry, I just think sometimes with anything people just – get a little bit confused and perhaps they project feelings that don't necessarily exist. So well, how did I mean, you deal with that? I mean, what, what did you I do? I just said, I'm really sorry I can't come to VidCon. <laughs> then I cried. Oh, but no, no. you didn't respond to the people, the uh, stalkers. Look, These are stalkers, right? Well, I mean, they're not, at, I mean, it's, uh, to be honest now, I, I don't even know if I get them. You know I mean? You just don't read them after a while, but didn't mm-hmm. know that then. So perhaps I just paid too much attention to them and I should have just let them go. Was it the type of thing you had to call the police? Um, I called the cops once because uh, a few times, but I remember one time I was really upset because someone left a package outside my house mm. and it had obviously happened in a very short break where I had left my house to walk down the road for something. So I assumed they were in my street waiting because it had no postage stamps or anything like that. And I called the cops, but back then again, no one really watched YouTube. So the cops just said to me, you know, well, get don't, over it. Yeah, yeah. Don't go on the internet then. Well, did they open the box? Oh yeah, so we opened the box and there was just weird stuff in it. So, yeah. what do you? Well, I want to know what the weird stuff was. <laughs> you sicko! <laughs> <laughs> it was your shirt and your no, no, <laughs> your shirt, your shirt and your glasses and all those weird things you wrote to me. <laughs> no, it was um, it was just a letter that he'd written from the perspective of like my fish and he'd given me stuff to put in my room and stuff like that. And I look, I know it came. They were. It was good intentions, just right. in the wrong way. That's just all. somebody who doesn't understand boundaries. Yeah, who was around the block, which is scary. And then the cops didn't do anything. No, they said if he hurts you, then we can do something. I was like, that's great. If he hurts me, I'll let you <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> so. Thanks, thanks well, for the I help. I mean, did it get worse? How how did that? How does that res- story resolve? No, does, no, nothing happened. And this is the thing: is I should have just learned from a. I should have just been smarter from younger and just realized you just ignore things. Rather. Well, but you know, I I can't help but think that you know, if you think if you take us for an example, I mean, first of all, being guys that you just naturally don't have to deal with those oh, things you, as much. But you, you must like no, you must. It's, you don't. it's not it's it's not to the same degree. And then I think that there's two, there's two of us, right? So, but if you if you if you change a couple of those factors and there's there's more of that kind of thing. Uh, you're you kind of by yourself. You, it's not like you're sharing the channel with somebody. I mean, I know how, how that would affect me personally. Is I would I would lose some of my motivation to kind of be like, okay, yeah, I really I want to keep doing this and I want to keep raising my profile because what I'm going to get more crazy people like this that are trying to reach out to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> if that's if that's part of the package, I could see how that would cause you to to lose a, a little bit of, of a taste for you know YouTube fame. Yeah, well, look, look, I, I shouldn't have made, you know, I was in my bedroom. I was making videos at night. I created a very intimate setting. I, I probably should have been more aware of that. And I'm sure you guys receive, I mean, it's all girls screaming out there at VidCon. I'm sure you guys have received your fair share but of But girls scary. aren't as crazy as guys. Yeah, they are. Like, I'm going to go in your house and wear your clothes. And like, <laughs> girls touch everything. Like, that's, that's scary too. But <laughs> <laughs> it is. And <laughs> Well, you're just making me very... Uh, thankful that we, I haven't read any of those. So <laughs> right. I'm just telling you, we don't. <laughs> They're in your bedrooms right now. There are girls <laughs> okay. in your bed. Right. I'm, you know, I'm just saying it's girls around the hallways right now. You know what I mean? I, th- I think you, I'm sure you guys are a subject to that. So. <laughs> Somewhat, but you know, not to the same degree. Um, so as you, as you, obviously, you say you've got things that you want to try 
off of YouTube. Mm. YouTube has changed dramatically, you know, over the past eight years. Your content has definitely gotten, you know, more polished and that kind of thing. Like you said, as you've you've added, uh, just from a technical perspective, it's mm. it's gotten it's it's changed and gotten better. But it was always great in terms of the content, and yeah. you've, it seems like you're continuing to kind of pump it out. Like, what is the What's the long-term plan with with YouTube? I don't know. I'm really worried because I'm hitting 30 soon. And I'm really worried because I meet these little girls like, I watch you and I'm like, you must be 11. Like, this is not good. Like, this is not good. No, I, I don't know. I guess I'll just keep doing it till I have a lot more videos that don't make it than do. And then I'll just stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but, but you're doing other things at the same time, right? Yeah. So like you did this, you shot the series, which that, well, that was for a brand. It went somewhere else. Yeah, that went somewhere else. What and, was it? I was for Lonely Planet, so we did a, an around-the-world mm-hmm. travel series. And we're trying to do one now, but it's a bit harder, ironically, independently, because we don't have a brand attached to us, even though we produce the whole series anyway. Um, so we've had a lot of trouble with just tourism boards kind of getting right. back to us. And just because of what we learned, it was so hard to get content to fill two minutes when mm. you don't know anything about a city. Yeah. So we would land in a city and we'd go, we have two days to film here. Mm-hmm. And that's quite hard. So we've been trying to talk to tourism boards about organizing itineraries, but they don't necessarily want to collaborate with YouTubers. But I understand they must get a billion requests a day from bloggers and, and whatnot. But that's the flavor of the type of projects that you're working on at oh, the moment? No. So um, we run a few companies. Uh, we do like corporate videos and we also make, this is, we make wedding videos as well. Oh, yeah? Um, that's one of my favorite things. And that's what we do. And that takes, we just finished wedding season in in Australia, so and I so, would freelance doing other things as also we freelance. Producing. So it sounds like you 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 like to be involved in the creative process in 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 this kind of medium, uh, but it isn't necessarily that all your efforts are focused towards the personality, Natalie centered content that YouTube YouTube's all about that, right? It's just personality driven. Yeah. But you're saying I want to make videos, I want to be creative, I want to write. But I don't necessarily have <clears throat> have this aspiration to be like no. But I want to funnel all that creativity into, you know, your channel to continue to grow that. I just don't have. I don't have what it takes. I don't think it seems to be a lot of. I I totally understand there's a lot of effort. I know a lot of people don't, especially in traditional media. When I hear interviews with YouTubers, I know how much effort goes into a YouTube channel. I know how much effort goes into you know, the, the community and God, you go into a company and they have a whole person dedicated to running the Facebook page. So I understand how much effort goes into a YouTube channel. I don't have that kind of motivation or dedication. So I don't think I could carry it off. But um, yeah, I just don't have that dedication. <laughs> well, but but I think kind of what what we've kind of arrived at is that it's uh, it's definitely not a an ability issue. You don't have that specific desire that would lead to that that would lead to this is the only thing that you do and this is like you're 100% all in. I don't know how. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean it's not you I mean you're not a, you're not being accused of anything. It's it's very much just it's interesting. I think honestly refreshing, you know, to talk to somebody who that isn't their very specific uh aspiration. I just don't know how everyone does it. Like I'm trying to organize um like some t-shirts and stuff and Ugh, my brain just melts when they write back an email that's more than a paragraph. And I'm like, oh my God, there's this words in here and fulfillment and <laughs> close, come back to that in three months time. So, Well, one, uh, you know, one of our dreams is to come to Australia. So uh, maybe you can do. help when us answer do. the questions please that do. Uh, that's uh, you true. have when we come there. So No, you should definitely go to Australia. Whereabouts would you want to go? We wanted, we'd want to do like a four I by four. It. A four by four adventure. You know how big Australia is, right? Like it's a big. Yeah. It's big. A lot of four by four <laughs> adventures are happening there. Oh, that would be wonderful. When were you doing it? I'm committing you now. <laughs> when are you doing? Whenever it? you book us, do you have a do you have a four wheel drive vehicle? I I have a three door car. And everyone, what happened to the fourth door? It, no, it's like one of those really small Mazdas. It's not going to make it across the outback. It, no. A hatchback. Yeah. Is that what it is? A two-door hatchback. Yeah. And I make everyone wait when they want to get in the back seat, and I push the seat forward, and I'm like, you can hop in now. <laughs> well, we can work. We can get our own transportation. <laughs> <laughs> I can hire a car, though. 
Okay. I'm like, right. I got my full license this year. I'll hire a car for you guys. It's got to have like really big we tires. Don't, we don't have any plans, but we do want, we are at some point. I don't know how many months or years it will be, but we're going we're gonna to come Why to Australia. Why so far away? You know, you got to plan these you gotta things. Line are things. you guys up. booked far in it? You must be making content all the time. Like you must. I mean, we're really busy, but it, yeah, it's just something like that just will take just a lot of things that fall into place. But we're going to do it. It's going to yeah, happen. Yeah. May I ask if you're booked up? Like, do you create content in advance? Like, are you all. I mean, we try to, you know, get our Rent Link channel stuff lined up mm-hmm. and then Good Mythical Morning, you know, it, we just have to keep churning those out. You know, it's a daily show type thing. Yeah. So. And may I ask, do you get tired creating so much content? Yeah. I mean, there, there's a mentality that like you've started this this train, right? And it's, and it's got this momentum and if, sometimes you just find that you're just exclusively committed to just keeping the train going, right? Mm-hmm. And we get to, the, I mean, we, we're able to encourage each other and we're doing enough different things that, you know, we don't have to just do the one thing. So that helps us out a lot. And we let our ideas drive us a lot. And we have, you know, we have the freedom on the Rent Link channel to do anything we want, which is really great. We're grateful for that. So that helps. Yeah, so there's not any, at this point, there's no real... There's no real sense of burnout or anything like that, even with all the content that we create. But there is like, man, this is tough and it never stops. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because like, obviously I just take breaks whenever I want. But how do you deal with having to, this is the thing with YouTube and the internet, right? There's no seasons. So it just continues. And how do you guys deal with that kind of Well, we we used to break up Good Mythical Morning and we still do break up Good Mythical Morning into seasons, Mm. but the breaks in between seasons have gotten to just like this one between season five and six is a week. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like how do you, that's not, that's just another episode. So you really don't get, (laughs) you don't get a break. Yeah. To to the answer to the question is, well, we don't because once people make this, you know, make our show a part of their daily routine, you're like, well, I don't want to stop because then they'll stop making it a part of their daily routine. But we can do it from Australia, so we'll, we'll figure out how to make yeah, that happen. Yeah, that's right. It takes yeah. a full day to fly to Australia, though, so that's a day you won't be able to that's make content. That's fine. We'll have to bank one. <laughs> yeah, we can shoot ahead of time. We can make it happen. Well, listen, we'll uh, we'll take our uh, Australian epic trip offline. That's what they say in the corporate world. Uh, but keep doing what you do, and thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you, you guys, too. And there you have it, our ear biscuit with Nat Tran. I feel like I'm calling Nat. Well, Nat Tran. Now that now that we've had the uh, ear biscuit, you know, uh, is that Nat with a G or just Nat N A T? Oh, just no G. That <laughs> you, that would be an I insult. See, I saw so the look also, on your face. You're like, there's a G in Nat. I was thinking that. <laughs> no, I literally I put it everywhere except at the beginning <laughs> yeah, of the word. Put it before. Like, you saw the, the wheels end. turning. Like Nat like, G, like a n- silent Nagat, n- Nagat, n- Nagat, n- Nat. N- <laughs> it was a Nat joke. Okay, you know, I, I feel like I have two seemingly contradictory thoughts in my head at the same time, and when this happens, I like to stop and recognize it. Okay, um, because I feel like these are the special moments in life, Link, when you have two contradictory thoughts in your head about Nat Natalie, Tran. about G Nat. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, on the one hand, it's refreshing. Very refreshing to talk to someone who is just kind of like, guys, I am not going to take your bait yeah, and, yeah. and say that I want to be the super successful entertainer that you guys want me to be. <laughs> That's the one thought. And then the second thought is a frustration with her hmm. um, because she is so awesome. Uh, she's an incredible, unique voice mm-hmm. and... It, I her sense of her sensibility and her sense of humor and her writing style and all that, it, I can see it so easily expanded into other formats. You know, beyond it, what she's doing is great, but I can see it expand in so many different places. And as a producer, the producer right. in me, as a producer wants and to a fan, s- wants to see it come to life and and blossom into what it could be. And so I'm like, what? Well, but I don't want to. I'm I'm not one to force you into that. So it's refreshing, and I want to, like, you know, I'm kind of envious on one, on one hand, but then I'm frustrated on the other. Right, right. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. I feel uh, refreshed that after, you know, eight years of YouTube content, it's, she's, it's, still, it's, still, an out, it's still a creative outlet for her. 
Yeah. It hasn't become a job. I mean, maybe there, maybe it's not evolving on another continent. Maybe that's over, trying to oversimplify. I like the analogy. The Australian though. thing. But, She's a marsupial YouTuber. Um, maybe it's more of a personality type. Um, you know that she's you know she says i don't it makes my mind melt to think about merchandising it's she doesn't think that way but she the way she does think is very comedically and insightful and you know we can just we can just revel in that and be happy that hey she's doing this as an outlet and she's got other things going on too that we don't necessarily get to see but it rounds out who she is as a person why do we have to see all of it and that be her career but yeah as a producer and as a fan, I'm like, well, if if she was a couple blocks from here, well, I'd love to work together yeah. on a you know on a frequent basis and just tap into that uh, comedic psyche that she's got. Yeah, and, 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 and maybe the verb is exploit it, and I think maybe that's what she's sensitive to. And but I don't know. Yeah, I think that theories the, abound. Yeah, it's it remains to be seen. I think that uh, my analysis of the situation is that part of it. Is the fact that she is just not uh, as enamored with, you know, wh- she kind of knows, in some sense, what it would be like to be even bigger than she is right now, and it's not something that interests her. But I hope that it's not that she that she feels like she needs to apologize for her success or that she doesn't deserve it, because that's the last thing that's true. Because she definitely deserves it. She's she's a unique talent. And uh, we were happy to have a conversation with her, and we're going to keep watching her content. Yeah, and uh, you let her know what you think of her on her Twitter. You know, hashtag her up. I, you know what? I don't think you should hashtag. I think you should use the at symbol. You can hashtag Ear Biscuits, but then at Natalie Tran. Hashtag her up. <laughs> hashtag Ear Biscuits. How does that let, work? Nat, let Natalie Tran know what you think. That's, hey, you know that's what? what it is. We could do hashtag GNAT. I mean, you could do that. We could start that, yeah. too. Also, leave us a review on iTunes and uh, just just keep listening. You know, uh, we value that and we value you. These air biscuits are baked for you, not for nobody. Yeah, because we unabashedly and unashamedly want more and more people to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> or we want, to, well, I just said I want them to keep listening. Yeah, well, and more new people. I didn't say, I'm please not going to apologize. Your, please get your other people to the listen. The last thing you're going to accuse me of is being apologetic about more people listening. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. And on that note, we'll have another one next week. (laughs) We will.